Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Monday live stream and happy Labor Day. If you are off of work, congratulations. Let's go over a little bit of uh, what's going on in the crypto market and jump right in. So today there was a nice little article, which I used to love these articles because it really comes out and says, you know, this is how great uh, Bitcoin, and the crypto market is doing and there's accumulation going on. And of course, you love to hear these things because that's adoption, right? Well, it's adoption for a subset of individuals. It doesn't mean that there's mass adoption going on. So I do like these articles that kind of show you where things are going. And in all honesty, if you take a look at the chart itself, it looks like this is a 17 month high. And what we're looking at is from sentiment, the amount of wallets holding at least 100 Bitcoin has increased rapidly in the past month. And I have to tell you, if you are accumulating right now, it's not a bad time because the price keeps slipping. And that is the problem with some of these articles and charts because when people take a look at this like oh this is great people are accumulating this means that the prices are going up no it's not how it works it's unfortunately this is where all the smart money i mean i don't want to call it smart money we'll just call it big money starts to come in and make all their gains because they know that as time goes on they're not going to want to accumulate as we get to all-time highs that's for suckers and right now is when everybody starts to not everybody when the big money starts to realize like, hey, we can buy some things in the background, not give away our what's going on for us, and we can start to accumulate. And to me, it's just another one of those days where it's like, well, this is accumulation. But last night, if you weren't aware, we had like a little bit of a flash crash. Went from, it's funny, it went from 58,698 yesterday, dropped all the way down to almost 56 something, but it was actually 57,002. So imagine that, you know, you could have, if you would have bought up here and then just waited a little bit and then come back, you're like the exact same spot. So what the hell happened? Well, it's the same thing that always happens. And it's the same thing that's gonna keep happening until people get tired of it. People get liquidated. People think that they can beat the market. Traders are out there and I have no faults with traders. I mean, if you wanna do that, that's your thing. That's not my thing. And if we take a look at the last, ooh, we'll say 24 hours or so, Longs got wrecked about 104 million, shorts got wrecked about 47 million. And what I want to point out to you in the last six months or so, or so, what do you notice about the total liquidations chart? In green are the longs, in red are the shorts. Which ones get liquidated the most? That's right, it's the longs. So I know people are very bullish on Bitcoin. I'm very bullish on Bitcoin, obviously. But it seems like there's a lot of things going on in the background which allow a lot of people to get really into profits as they start to wreck all the individuals who get over exuberant. And that is one of the problems with this market. It happens, we see things that are happening, we're like, oh, I'll just dump everything into there. That's not the way that I'd like to do things, but you can do whatever you want to. And this is just further proof. So liquidations, that makes a lot of sense. And also, this is an article from Decrypt. Excess supply of Bitcoin could keep pushing Bitcoin down. And that's a funny thing, right? Excessive supply of Bitcoin. Don't, isn't everybody talking about how, you know, the, uh, the exchanges, there's a liquidity prices, crisis. There's something going on. And everything's getting drained. No, not really. And what this, and of course, you can cherry pick it all the day that you want to. Like, if you just, took this out of context, you're like, oh, wow, all these wallets are, you know, accumulating 100 Bitcoin, but it's a very small amount. 283, 283 Bitcoin wa whale wallets exist compared to one month ago, 283. So when you see these things, you got to put everything in context got and say, am I want, do I want to be here for the long haul, the short haul? Do I want to be the big money or do I want to be the ones that get suckered into things? And there's a shakeout. Just depends on what you want to do. So this part right here, we'll see what it is. So according to a new report by Keiko, and we're going to take a look at that report. The crypto market is currently grappling with a significant supply overhang. That's very odd. Significant Bitcoin price pressure related to the Mt. Gox distributions. Well, hold on. Wasn't everybody just talking about how that was already distributed and we we're fine? We're not out of the woods yet. Then we'll take a look at the actual Mt. Gox wallet in a second. So there's the Mt. Gox distributions, Japanese yen carry trade, which is more of a macro type of thing, and simply slowing demand, let's be honest. There is not much demand as much there used to be, and I think we can all feel that sentiment. One of the primary sources of market anxiety has been the ongoing redistribution of funds to Mt. Gox creditors. 
bankrupt crypto exchange estate still holds over 46,000 Bitcoin. 46,000, that's $2 billion, which is slated for eventual redis redistribution. But that doesn't make any sense because everybody's talking about it's already been redistributed. No, no, it hasn't. This is from Arkham. I linked this in the description so you can do your own research. This is how much Mt. Gox, the wallet, actually owns. It's about $2.5 billion, just like they said. And you can just see right here, from, ah, from May 31st, 2014, there's 162,000. There's a little bit of a drop off as they redistribute in 2018. And then this was when they had the big redistribution and they took the Bitcoin that they had gotten from the hackers all the way back in the hack of Mt. Gox. And you had 142,000 Bitcoin drop to 46,000. And if you take a look at the total balance history, what do you see? Well, not too long ago, this was in July 14th, when of course Bitcoin's price was a little bit higher. You had all, about $8.2 billion worth of Bitcoin and that got redistributed, right? As we just took a look at. Now they're sitting at, and this is low prices at two and a half billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. So yes, it's gonna be redistributed. Are people going to sell? I believe so. But remember, the people that actually got their Bitcoin so far haven't sold a whole boatload of it but that doesn't mean that people aren't going to sell. That doesn't mean that people aren't going to try to short and long. That doesn't mean that people are trying to do leverage plays. And that's the thing that happens for the volatility and just accept it because that's what it is. And to really further dive in it, this is the actual Keiko report. I linked this in the description. So again, you can do your own research for what I'm telling you. So where might the Bitcoin pressure sell from? Sell pressure come from Mt. Gox. And then it talks about volume and liquidity. The daily trading volume of the top 10 crypto platforms has surged 30% since 2023, mainly driven recently by the launch of spot Bitcoin ETFs in the United States. Now, I was happy when the ETF got approved. I was very uh, exuberant about the whole process. I never thought it was actually going to happen. And sure as hell it did. But when you have a Bitcoin ETF, and I don't care how you get here, just as long as you get here, but it really does go against what Bitcoin actually does right? As far as like 24-7, 365 liquidity, you don't have that with an ETF. As far as moving value across borders, that is definitely not happening. And then of course, not your keys, not your crypto. You're not controlling that. The institutions are. So again, I don't blame people for getting into it. That's fine. I'm just saying at some point, you got to put your big boy pants on and start to figure out that, hey, I can custody this. I'm an adult. I can do these things. But if you don't want to, hey, it's, it's whatever you want to do because at the end of the day, it's you, not me. So then just to finish this up, what happens to the liquidity when things go wrong? So like we just saw not too long ago with that yen carry trade and the macro economic factors, which dropped us quite a bit, driven by macro factors and structural changes in FX markets, volatility spiked and Bitcoin dropped around 20%. Remember that? February, 2024. Briefly trading below 50,000 for the first time since February. Excuse me, that was not too long. It was like probably a month ago or so. The market tumultuous was punctuated by changes in some crucial liquidity indicators, namely price slippage. Okay, so we've got leverage, we've got traders, we've got bots probably doing the things, and now we got price slippage. And we can, and it just takes a look at the different price slippage events happening between different exchanges, such as Coinbase, such as Binance, and of course, Traders take opportunity of that. And if they're, they're smart enough, they'll figure it out because they want to make money. So what does that lead me all to? It goes to this. It's the same thing I've been talking about for quite some time. Is that when people say, hold on, there's adoption going on. Why is the price going down? It's a selling multiplier effect. You've got margin trading like we just took a look at. You got leverage. You got people getting liquidated, right? Then people see that and they go, oh my God, everything's going to hell in a handbasket. I got to sell. And that's the herd mentality. You've got thin order books because I hate to break it to you, but as far as like Bitcoin and altcoins and things like that, there's not a lot in all these different exchanges. If you take a look at, you know, the actual volume, then of course we talked about bot trading, slippage, which we just take a look at arbitrage and stop loss orders. So when people say like, I don't get why this is happening, it's happening because of this and it will keep happening. And that's why a dollar cost average. So what do you do? I don't know. I'm not your dad. <laughs> but in all honesty, I'm sorry. This is what I always think about is this. I know people, some people believe in the four-year cycle, some don't. I still say that it's amazing how September comes up and it becomes rectember, just like we kind of talked about. Maybe it'll be awesome, but I don't think anything's going to happen until we get 
out of this nonsense of presidential elections and everybody starts getting so scared about the big R word recession. Once we get out of that, we'll be fine. But again, it's always the same thing. It never stops. And you can take a look here. There's a bear market. There's an accumulation zone. There's a, there's a bull market. And we haven't hit that bull market. People say we have, we've topped out. I personally don't believe that, but you're welcome to believe what you really want to believe. And lastly, I'll just say this. If you're looking for a little bit of motivation, I had this, I, I put out these posts and it was about 10 or 11 images. And I said, I want you to, wa I want you to read through this when you have doubts. And just go back to this because I went through the same thing in 2018. I was like, oh my God, everything's crashing and collapsing. This is it. This was going to zero. And then we saw the same thing in 2020 when we had the coronavirus. Remember March 2020? Everything's going down, hell in a handbasket. Oh my God, this is where it really goes to zero. They were all right. And then, of course, everything repeats itself. So when you're feeling a little doubt, just go through this. And I said it very simply someone with half your IQ is making 10 times as much because they aren't smart enough to doubt themselves. And then we go through some other things about how people, the emotional impact of investing, I get it. And just some other pieces that I think could help you get through some stuff as time goes on. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And also, congratulations to the Cardano community. Charles Hoskinson had, had a really great video. I don't think I linked it in the description, but you can find his channel. He's always got a little stream going on, something like that. But the Chang Hard Fork is now live, and that happened on September 1st, and today is the 2nd, so that was just yesterday. So in the video, Charles emphasized that Cardano's accomplishment is one of humans' most significant technical feats because a distributed system operating across more than 100 countries seamlessly evolved into a decentralized entity, complete with its constitution without central coordination. He states, Cardano is now a governance virus that is living, I don't know that's a good best way to say it, but it's fine. Governance virus that is living, self-replicating, and self-sustaining. It is intelligence and a will to survive and grow. Nothing can shut it down. Nothing can stop its growth. I will say, uh, out of all the chains that are out there, has Cardano ever gone down? I don't think it has. So good for the for Cardano communities, and they've got a decentralized autonomous organization now where everybody can vote and decide the trajectory of where Cardano is actually going to go. So congratulations for all you Cardano holders. I know some people hate it. Some people love it. But regardless, you can't take it away. It was a pretty good feat, actually, I did that. And then lastly, uh, hamster combat. And it's not about the game, because we talked about this months and months ago, and then they, they're having an airdrop right now, and it's free. Why I'm interested in this part right here is because, first of all, TonCoin has gone down. TonCoin, the blockchain, has gone down twice. And it's all because of dogs, this 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 essential token from a game that is a mini app within Telegram. And right now, if TonCoin can keep up with this, I think a lot of things are fixed. But if it can't, because these guys have 200 million users and they're going to do an airdrop, this is the biggest airdrop in the history of Web3. This is even bigger than what happened with Near and Sweatcoin with 120, 150 million users. Now you have 200 to almost 300 million users and you're going to do an airdrop and not go down. If they can pull this off, this will be amazing. So here's what we got. And it talks about how can, how can TonCoin even handle the hamster combats, airdrop, just so you know, that's already being listed. I, KuCoin, BitGit, and I think Binance, don't quote me on that. So all you got to do is just play this goofy little game, which we talked about before and you're gonna get free money. That's essentially what it comes down to. And uh, that's it. So here's what we have. Hamster combat has gained significant traction. Excuse me, 300 million players in just a few months. 80 million active players in the past month alone. That dwarfs anything that is happening in the Web3 space, as far as the amount of daily and monthly active users. Uh, hamster combat team plans to allocate 60% of the total hamster token supply for distribution among the game's players. That's a lot with the remaining 40% set aside for market liquidity, ecosystem partnerships, grants, and rewards. KuCoin announced, KuCoin announced it will ha list the hamster token in pre-market trading, but here's the thing. TonCoin just had an airdrop 
like we talked about with dogs. And dogs only had 10 million users. You're going from 10 million users, which shut down TonCoin, and you're going to go to 300 million users or 80 million monthly active users. That's an 8x to what, 30x of what these guys did, and it's still, still supposed to stay up. I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know if that's going to happen, but we'll see. There was this piece here. Let me see if I can find it. Ah, yes. This was from the developers. The issue was two main factors. Firstly, validator configuration contained errors. I can't believe they actually admitted that. Good for them. And secondly, ton validators were running on poor hardware. Again, can't believe they admitted that, but great. Projects are still working out the best way to distribute their token at scale, and this exacerbated the issues caused by these factors. So it talks about how they're going to fix it and how everything's going to be perfect. Let's see. Because that is supposed to happen on September 24th. Where is see? Where I see this? Excuse me, September 26th. So let's see what actually happens as we move forward. And lastly, I uh, just want to bring to everybody's attention a new scam that's out there. I think this one is the most dangerous yet. I'm going to just have this guy explain it to you. And I was kind of surprised that this could actually can happen, but it's happening all across the states and I think in parts of the EU. So listen to this. Hold on. I want to make sure you hear this. Bop, 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 bop. Here, take a listen. And send there on it, but it's going to have your information, your name, your address on the. I'm saying it might send a package like it's from Amazon or whatever like that. Uh, it's not going to have a return sender on it, but it's going to have your information, your name, your address on the package, uh, basically uh, on the gift to to you, to your residence. So what's going to happen is you're going to get the package. You're going to look at it. It's like, oh, okay, someone sent you a gift. It's going to be a QR code on the package or in the package or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to scan the QR code. And once you scan the QR code, every bit of information in your phone is going to get sent to the scammer. It's going to send in your credit card information, your bank information, your pictures, your phone numbers, your contacts, everything that's in your phone. After you scan that QR code, you know what I'm saying? It's going to get sent to the scammer. So that's crazy. All right, so just want to warn everybody, that's a thing. I didn't know that was a thing until today. So if you get a package and you don't know where it's from, you're like, oh, it's a gift. Scan this QR code for whatever, you know, for more gifts or whatever it does. It can take all your information. I didn't even know that actually existed, but apparently that happens. That's going to take all your information, all your phone numbers, all your, if you've stored like some data inside your phone, which we mostly do, some of us do, uh, that goes to the scammers. So don't scan anything moving forward. That's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.